Murph, uh, defense and pitching were the or relief pitching were the two things that kind of carried you guys more than anything. It seemed like tonight it's the two things that kind of hurt you the most. Yeah, I mean we we've been we've been um, we've been good all year in the bullpen. Um, we had a lead in the game, and we had four of the best relievers in the game eligible. So we um, felt pretty good about it. Second one to the right, Tyler. Murph, what did you see in Peralta? He had obviously retired nine guys in a row, but there, was there something that you saw that made you think, well, he, he's not at his best? I don't, I don't think he retired nine in a row, but um, maybe. Um, three, six, well, one was a hard contact sack fly to center, but um, it isn't about that. You know, he's... He's probably 18 pitches, 18 pitches from where his he kind of is limit. We take the lead in the game. We've got a full bullpen. It's a playoff game. You don't, you don't. Well, you know, we'd like to get him to five because of our bullpen usage over the week. You don't do that. You're playing to win tonight. And Piamps has got a 1.03 ERA in 30 games. Hasn't given up a run in 12 outings. You know. They, if Piamps gets into the top of the order again, or if uh, Peralta gets to the top of the order again, then it changes how we use the bullpen usage. Then Ashby has to come in for Nemo and get the ground ball like he did. Um, but Piamps is out of the inning. You know what I mean? And we're, we're still, we're not even talking about this. That's a good outing for Freddie. He was very emotional. So those 70 pitches are a little different when it's that much emotion. And Piamp's got the great play by Churio. Then it's a tough left field out there at that time of day. So that second ball, although should have been caught, give the kid credit. It's a tough line drive in that sun. That's the one spot of the field. It's tough. He doesn't catch that ball. So now we got to get four outs. Piamp's gets the next out. Then he doesn't cover first. And, and then two infield hits. And then we bring in, or we bring in Ashby. He gives up an infield hit. Then he gives up another hit and another hit. And that's they got to face three hitters. So it's unlike Ashby. He's been one of our best guys. His stuff is unbelievable. Um, it's just unfortunate. Credit to the Mets, all they've been through, and credit to them, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, but you know, Piamps and Ashby, leaving Freddie in one more inning, maybe we could have. It would have changed how we used the relievers, but maybe we could have. But I felt like we just took the lead. He had been an emotional 70 pitches. What has he got, 20 left? He's usually between 83 and 80, 83 and 90 is when he kind of loses a little bit on his fastball. Um, I didn't want to face those guys three times around. So that was kind of my explanation, knowing that, you know. Stay right there, Adam. Murph, when you look at your night offensively, probably just kind of looking at the scorecard, you kind of see a lot of marks at the beginning and then not many marks at the end. Same what? with them. Neither team got a hit after those runs scored. Neither team got a hit after the run scored. Interesting. You know, I don't know what inning that was or they got the five, but whatever it was, nobody got a hit after that. Isn't that crazy? We'll go to the left, fourth row, and then we'll come back at him. Uh, Murph, after listening to some of your explanations, it just seems like it was uncharacteristic baseball by your team. Uh, how do you get them to get back to being themselves for tomorrow's What was situation? uncharacteristic? Uh, you're saying, you know, Piamps is really good. He didn't cover the base. Right. Um, the outfield, the misplay, the defense. I mean, just some uncharacteristic moments here and there. I think teams are going to have moments. You know, I mean, this was a big game to have those moments in, but, you know, every team had Misplays. They they had their third baseman didn't field the ball early in the game. Um, you know they they just they capitalized at the right time. We had first and third, one out hit into a double play. We had another situation, second and third, and it didn't capitalize. We've had situations too early that you could say Severino uncharacteristically didn't throw strikes. You know early. You know and he got himself in trouble. But it's just the way it worked out. That big inning takes the wind out of your sails. And it really, it was emotional for both teams. Once it got to be 8-4, you 
Nobody did a thing. But credit to Severino settling down and really getting after it, making some great pitches. The reliever came in. Uh, uh, Buto was fantastic, and Stan- Stanek was great at the end. So credit where credit's due. And they had timely hitting. They hit the ball where we weren't, and um, give them credit. You know, nobody hit a homer. And that's unusual in a, in a game, but uh, yeah, Freddie, Freddie was a little off his game in that second inning. The emotions of the first inning, I think, maybe got to him a little bit. He gave up the triple and the sack fly, a couple hard contacts in a row, well, three hard contacts that inning, and then he settled in a little bit. But he, when his pitch count got up, and I felt like we had the full bullpen, the game changed. You got to cover first. You can't give him five outs in an inning, but it happens. We'll go back to that second row, Adam. Mark, just I don't know what you expected from Jackson in a big game, big stage like this. What did you see, and especially in those early at bats, mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of some loud contact? Yeah, I mean, Jackson was fantastic, man. He can, I mean, he's 20 years old, 20 years old to play the defense he played in that setting. Um, some of his good at bats, you know, he he's swinging and he's. Uh, you know, he's a special player. I'm really happy for him, and he knows. that the, the thing that I get happy about, Adam, is I get happy when a player um, knows he belongs. You know what I mean? Hey, I belong. And I like the big moments, and I like being in this situation, and I expect a lot of myself. That, you know, translates to a really, really good all-star type player. And, um, yeah, Milwaukee fans, I mean, he's special. We got a game to play tomorrow, and we usually respond. You know, this is one of the great things about this ball club is that they respond. And um, yeah, I respect the Mets a great deal. Um, I, I think we'll come out and compete tomorrow. We'll go uh, to the right, fourth row. Regarding tomorrow, are you ready to announce a starting pitcher? And if yeah, you do, we're going to start Frankie Montas tomorrow. What did? What went into that decision? What did you see from Montas since he's gotten here that made you want to? Well, I mean, Frank, Frankie's been great. Um, we just wanted to see how this game <clears throat> rolled out. Um, having to use Savali, who was sensational also. Him and Mears pitched really well. It's really encouraging. Um, and, uh, yeah, having thrown Savali, it made, it made the decision easy. Savali's thrown the ball great for us recently, too. And uh, so, Frank, you'll get the smart start tomorrow. All right, we'll just do a couple more. Second row on the left. Merv, can you, uh, can you expand a little bit on what you see in, in their temperament, how you think they'll handle this moment and what is to come tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I think that, that this team all year long, you know, um, played with an urgency. They really did. I mean, once we clinched in, on the 18th, um, we're 10 games up in the conference. I think we, we ended up winning, winning the division by 10 games. You know, um, they were a little bit, whew, you know what I mean? And there were some games where I, I mentioned we took the foot off the gas a little bit, um, try to give some guys some rest. Um, but they're disappointed. You know, they're disappointed how this game went. It's, it's a big blow because we're in control of the game and in 12 pitches we're not in control of the game over a – Misplay in the, uh, in the outfield, it was a tough ball. And then a not cover first to end the inning, and then five runs score after that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that's tough to recover from. That's a big blow. Credit the Mets for capitalizing. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, this team has responded in all those. Remember the Dodgers beat the daylights out of us twice. We responded. The Yankees beat the daylights out, out of us twice. We responded. Um, I, I think we're responding. Now they got a, they got, you know, they they got their one and two going. So they got uh, Manaya tomorrow, who's very very good. So, last question, second row on the right. Or if just to go back to that Ashby outing, did it seem to snowball on him a little bit? Was the command off? What what did you see from? Yeah, him? you know what. To be honest, you know, I, I haven't watched it. You know. What I think happened is the game sped up on him a little bit. He still had his good velo, but he didn't have his good sync. You know, he didn't have his good movement on it. Um, and then he was a little, it seemed a little tentative on his breaking stuff. Um, 
but you know, you saw in '97 and '99, the kid has been him and Piams have been, along with McGill and Williams, those have been, you know, four of the best relievers in the game if you do the numbers. Um, so I was pretty confident that with Piams one, Ashby two, McGill and Williams were good. Um, it didn't work that way. So.